Hey, hello everyone. How you doing? I hope you're doing good. Another night in the stream, so it's it's going to be like the last stream for for uh, 2018 for uh, for myself. So, I'm glad to be here with you guys. And uh yeah, without f f you know, further ado, uh I don't I don't have like a whole lot of new news. Like it's uh I got like news upcoming, but uh, I'll tell tell you that later. Uh, you know, I, like for this time, I think I want to go like quickly into sculpting. So I'll just do like a brief uh, introduction for like another of the inspiration uh, sculptor that I really like. So I'll try to make this quick, just to be sure I'm not losing too much time. Uh, it's basically Simon Lee. I don't know if you guys actually ever seen that guy. He's not like a ZBrush sculptor per se, but he actually did some piece for um, Sideshow Collectibles. But I just think like the old gesture and, and posing, that's definitely one of my uh, top uh, favorite sculptor. So yeah, you d should definitely look up, look up for him. Um, basically go on Instagram for Spider Zero, uh, on Facebook for Simon Lee Spider Zero, and he even got like uh, his online classes that you can enroll and I think you can even go on site but uh, yeah I mean like it's, it's clearly like one of the sculptors which is like totally amazing like uh, if you can like the the chance to look at this a uh, picture of a I think it's like Ultraman or something like that and he's like punching creatures and all it's yeah it's it's really really cool but yeah I think he worked um, basically with um, on Pacific Rim on the on the I forgot the name of the beast like the creatures but uh yeah so that's him the other stuff is actually one of the you know how often like try to present uh tutorials and tools and stuff like that and it's like it's this guy who I just like find out recently which uh did like a kickstarter to start like his company but I think it's pretty cool like what he came up with it's basically like a uh, 3D printed models of uh, anatomic reference of uh, you see like mainly like animals like a uh, um, all kind of gorillas, chimpanzee, and uh, all kind of uh, monkey types, and um, and he even got like some of the well, this one is sold out, but I mean human and rhino and all of that stuff. So yeah, and and even the price is like quite decent. I think to compares to well, maybe not all of them, but like some of them are like quite decent. So yeah, definitely. Uh, if you want to have like a great uh, reference bust, like uh, on your on your desk, something as reference, then I would definitely look for this guy. So just look for John Anatomy. So that's it for that. Hello guys. Hello Prashan. See you again. Hi Bian. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep up with uh, what we started last week. Um, I'll try to have like something a lot more advanced, at least for the for the the forms. So I I started like with this last week, and I didn't get a chance to. And just for the sake of speed, once again, I will uh, do this and then hide some parts of the body. I hope everybody's doing all right. I can't even remember why I put like this so high, but uh, maybe I wanted to show something, but I'm just gonna delete uh, subdivisions. I don't need like something that that high to uh, to be moved around. So, hello, Jay. Is that how do you, you pronounce your name? Or it's Jai or. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, like there's there's something that uh, I just like heard this morning, and it's like a uh, Thomas Roussel, which is a uh, you know one of the guys who works at Pixelogic, and and do actually do like a stream on this channel. Did like a contest to win like printers, and I think that's. Uh, I'll just like try to find the the name of his site. Give me a second. And basically, it's like everybody can participate, and um, it's it's not about who's getting like the best art, but just like just submitting your art will will get you into the contest. So and he will just like pick like a random winner. But I think like he's yeah, um, the prices are like I think Wacom's and some printers. So yeah, uh, just give me a second. I'll try to find. I just want to be sure I'm not like messing up his website and giving you guys a bad website. Um, it's pauldiscult.com. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> I said I wanted like to sculpt quickly, and already I'm like I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the, I'm on Chrome. Just give me a second. Uh, yeah. Right now, like it's in French, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Thomas doesn't mind. It's only like the shipping part, which I'm not like sure whoever actually wins. But uh, yeah, I think you guys should uh, definitely see some. That's some of the price. That's the first price, and uh, and that's the second price. So. Yeah, if you're like in France, because it's one hour uh, France and Wacom that are like are the sponsor of this uh, this thing. So yeah, definitely uh, if you want to try it out, uh, go for it. So, hey guys, glad to uh, see you here. I hope you're feeling all right. So right now I'm just gonna, I don't really mind if it's gonna be all uh, wobbly and my surface is not perfect. I'm just like trying to really nail the pose of the reference of those kind of uh, fangs going back. So, and once again I'm using like the, the AccuCurve curve would move to get like something a lot more sharper. And if it's if it does like something like that, I will just like smooth it out so it, it goes back to uh, being straight. So so uh, what have you been like up to, uh, guys? Have you like uh, been working on the past week on the? Some uh, some uh, cool sculpting or anything new? That's another trick. If you want to shorten your spike, you just like smooth it. And I'm like just really trying hard to do the similar shape that I'm seeing on the reference page. Oh yeah, that's right. Did you finish it? Did you finish the dog with the baby? Oh, I got like a. Oh wait. For some reason, it cannot display like the old link. Could that be? Because yeah, I like uh, you know as soon as I'm clicking on it, like it's it give me like an error. Oh, that sucks.
But yeah, I'd love like to see it. Or tag me in, well, I don't know if you can actually do that, but uh, if you can tag me or something with the image or so this is like crazy big so I'll and I'm spending a little bit more time on this one since uh, it's going to be uh, I'm going to be probably duplicating this one so, and since we don't really have like any end sensing in ZBrush, um, it's uh, it's why you try to make it good the first time, so you don't need like to go back and fix it and reduplicate it. Yeah, I think I think it's not too bad. Um, just looking at other, at other uh, reference. Um, Since that part seems to be part of the the bracer, I'm just gonna extrude it like that. I wanted like to duplicate it, but I think it's yeah, I think it it won't give me like the effect that I want. So I'll just like try to pre sketch something. I'm trying like to keep uh, some kind of uh, even flow, so yeah, it's it's still like pretty rough, but uh, I'm still like trying to keep that kind of a uh, wave that you got like along the arm, and it's and in the concept, it's like kind of a uh, turning a little bit to follow the the arm. I always like try to keep those kind of a uh, flow lines in the body. I think it it gi it gives like the body a uh, rhythm and it's more like interesting to see so right now it's really you know like I mentioned in the previous stream like I'm I'm uh, I'm making this like in double but it's really because first off I'm not sure if it's the kind of shape that I like it's like a way for me to first like I'm seeing it from the opposite side and um, that's a way for me to uh, to try like a uh, two different approach on what what kind of uh, shape I want to go with, and yeah, sometimes I'll pick this side to be you know symmetrized, or sometimes I'll pick this side. So so yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of like a micro way to design without like losing too much time. Oh, okay. Great. I'm going to click that link. Ah, oh, nice. It's called the lighting, eh? I like the render and all that. Did you render it in the uh, key shot? Oh, Blender? Yeah, I see Blender up there. Uh, it's nice, man. It's, it's really cool. I like it.
That's one other thing, in case you didn't know, like when you press uh, Alt and then you click on another subtool, it will select it. So you don't need like to go every time and then select it by hand. You can just like sculpt and and jump between subtools by uh, just just uh, pressing Alt. That's why you see like the minus on my on my cross and yeah and pick up the. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like sometimes, even like a simplified thing, it's a great way like to uh, practice uh, silhouettes because you can like uh, improve your the re readability of uh, your model. Since it's super simplified, if you put it just as a black silhouette, you should be like able to read it pretty well. So, without even seeing what's what what it's really showing. So. So you guys uh, did buy all your Christmas gifts. You all set for uh, Christmas, or you did like your uh, your wish list. <laughs> One other thing that I I think I'm gonna buy during my uh, but I don't know yet but uh, I'm starting like to look at uh, buying like a uh, a desk. Well, it's gonna be like a, I think I'm gonna just uh, buy like a like a a countertop and then find some kind of legs and then just like build my own uh, working table. So. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to do like something with like half um, PC rig and the other half would be like uh, meant for 3D print, like all the printers and all the, the post process that I need to do with those. So that's something I'm like trying to figure out. And it, uh, and I just like love that, <laughs> like, you know, gathering reference and, and even like design reference and how I want like the whole setup to look and and try to make it as functional as possible. So.
to like play out with the silhouette. So that's that's the the great thing about like having like this kind of approach. You can just like you you don't really care if you're like destroying details and stuff like that. You can still experiment and like you see like I don't mind if I'm losing some some part of the bracelet. Like I'll just quickly resculpt it. But it's it gives you like that that creative freedom of a. Uh, that's one of the things that I like. You know like like real clay. You know, you will not like define everything. You will just like try to play with the big forms, and then, and then really take your time before you go in and then start carving it. So, The start to organize my tools. I'm not sure I'm, I understand what you mean, uh, Brashan. never remember if it's okay that's it so I, ju I was just adding a little bit more subdivisions to that section so I can just like refine it a little bit more um, By the way, I apologize for the background mess. I mean, this week was like kind of crazy and uh didn't get the chance to prep everything. But yeah, at some point I'd love like to have like a nice backdrop with like, you know, figures and stuff like that. I got like my friend who actually bought me, but I think I, I said that the last time, like he bought me the God of War figure. And one of the things that I didn't show you was like, I got like the Overwatch Genji, but I actually got the the Widowmaker as well. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, I'll show it like another time. I just uh, I just want to get this thing going. Uh, yeah, sometimes I, yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing, like, at work, I use the, sorry, like, uh, Prashan, I just, like, catch up your, your question, like, about using, like, a start arrow, like, which is this, uh, at work, I use it, like, a whole lot more, but, uh, yeah, for here, right now, since I'm going to be splitting part and adding some, like, uh, I won't use it yet, but, yeah, at some point, I will, uh, just clean it up, and that's one of the things, like, it's, <laughs> how I work like one for one versus like when I'm streaming um yeah there's like really like boring stuff like like cleaning up my stuff that I won't actually do in front of you guys I'll do that like when I'm I'm offline so yeah it's definitely like the 
I try like to keep my stuff as clean as possible if I can. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the start is like pretty much like the the best alternative I got right now for uh, for our folder structure. So. So now I'll switch reference. Um, okay, and then it's one of the the trickiest thing and eh? like uh, for for this concept like tho those those uh, stuff sticking out and some concept are like sitting on top uh, but like other concept are like sticking from the elbow which I still find like pretty cool but I wonder if I could actually do like some kind of hybrid between the two and some of those things were actually seems to be attached to that kind of a bracelet so I think I'm gonna try to wrap that bracelet around Since I'm not working on symmetry, there's no reason why I should keep like the other side, so... Um. Once again, like I'll, I'll be trying stuff, I don't know if this will make it to the end, but... Because we got like cool stuff going on, like if, if I look at the reference, like stuff like that, I think that's pretty cool, but it feels like it's sticking out more from the, uh, the elbow. But if you look at this stuff, it seems really more like on top of the farm, so I'm trying to like some kind of plan between the two. But definitely one of the things that I like, if you look at this, like it's like this thing is like it's sticking out of the silhouette. Same thing with the mask on top, sticking out like some of the, you know, edges are sticking out. And then you got like those kind of uh, fangs sticking out as well. And one of the things that I like, it's like instead of having fangs that go like over the end, like we usually see, it's coming out more towards the back. So, so yeah, that's something I want to keep. But right now I'll try to focus on this reference and, and try to do like something like that. Like, you know, since uh, I started with like the other reference, I'll try to find a way to blend in both of them. If that makes like any sense. So what time is it? Is it uh, from where you're looking? Uh, you're looking at this video. Uh, is it? Uh, right during lunchtime or or it's right in the middle of the night
Oh, this is hard. Ah, oh, yeah. Seems like I, I don't know for which uh, reference I should settle on. It's, I guess it's part of fun, uh, the struggle. Because I don't want it like to look too thin. I kind of like the bulkiness of it. But at the same time, I, I don't want to go like too far away from the original concept, so. If I feel I'm I'm starting like to be trapped like that, like I don't know where to go anymore, and uh, I feel like I'm starting to run in circles, I'll I'll try to focus on another area of the model. Right now, one of the things that I don't like is like this guy is supposed to be lean, and he got like those huge biceps and even like forearms. So I'm gonna try to change that a little bit. I still want him like, to be uh, defined, but uh, but not too bulky. Sometimes I'll, I'll play with the proportions like that just to see if I can have like something uh, nicer or different or something that uh, I prefer. So yeah, so right now like I'm trying like usually the bicep is like a little bit more inside of the arm. So I'm trying like to go for that. And then the tricep and there's like this part but then the tricep kind of stick a little bit more from the outside, well one of the heads and then you got the whole we won't like probably see them but I still want to give an int it's more for me like a r as a roadmap on where I'm going but it's yeah it's lacking so much polygons that it's like kinda hard like to sculpt I think I'm gonna leave it like this. And one of the things that I remember from the anatomy class, it's uh, usually the deltoid goes almost halfway into the bicep. So right now everything looks kind of uh, squashed in a little bit more. But yeah, I'll try to make this work. And, and then remember, of course, like right now I'm not using like any uh, human body reference, but I should probably do. But since we're having fun, and I don't want to spend my time looking at reference while I'm streaming, I'll I'll try like just to remember what I know from it. So I'll try to define three heads. Once again, more as a landmark, and then. Still look like super massive, so. But once again, I uh, I'll come back later and fix it.
So see, that's a <laughs> that that could be like a good time to have like a, a sculpture next to me of the human body, and I could just like take a glimpse at it, and then adjust it. I think we'll go for that for right now. I keep saying that, but I keep you know sculpting it. But uh, yeah, I just want to work out a little bit more like on the end part. Oh wow, it's like 2 a.m. In, in the UK right now, and 8 p.m. in Minneapolis. Man, I feel honored that you actually uh, are still up like to watch the stream, even at 2 a.m. By the way, I guess all of you already know know that, but uh, you can uh, you know catch up on the streams on the YouTube channel. Of course, there's always the Twitch, but um, yeah, if you, if you miss the videos, like not just mine, like everybody's, all, all the people that stream on this channel, you can always like catch up on the on the Pixelogic YouTube channel. It won't be live, and uh, we won't be able like, to talk to each other. But at least, uh, yeah, if you if you want to rewatch it for some reason, you uh, you could. So once again, like the reason why it's pulling in is because I don't I don't have the back face mask. Mm, back face mask. So just gonna smooth it out. I got this small spike. Is it mask or? If you got that, sometimes you can just go in and just destroy it with the flatten. And if not, then it's no big deal. It's it's still part of the silhouette. I'll get rid of it when I extract that mesh. So I'm just gonna focus on the rest in the meantime. Oh yeah, Malaysia. It's cool, man. Like I heard, like the collectible industry in Malaysia is like booming right now. It's it's one of the hot spots for it. I wish like it wasn't like that remote. I would have loved like to win there and uh, check it out. But even like Singapore, I think like it's it's going really well. And I yeah, I might be wrong, but I think like XM Studios are actually located in Singapore. So I'm sure like the it helps quite a bit, like to have like a bigger industry in the collectible market. Yeah, seriously, I hope like those guys they're gonna try to keep their company as long as possible and not just like sell it. I know that's like it's for them, it's like a labor of love. Well, from what it seems, so it's not like if I know them, but uh, yeah, from from what I I've been hearing, it's uh, it seems like they're really uh, truly passionate about sculpting. It's just not that like people that are like in to make money or stuff like that. Well, to some extent, I guess yes, because they want the business to be successful. But I mean, like it's not the main motivator in there. It's really like uh, because they were passionate about the subject. Which is yeah, it's it's quite cool. I think I think it's 
to go uh, above and beyond. Uh, passion clearly needs to be there. And the last one. You guys know XM, right? <laughs> I'm <laughs> talking about that company, but right now it seems like there's like a, a few major ones in the collectible market. Well, like kind of the high-end collectible market, like the those, uh, you know, a hundred thousand, uh, not not a hundred thousand, sorry, like a thousand dollar uh, sculptures. Well, more or less. Sometimes are some of them like are less expensive or more expensive, but. Yeah, there's like clearly Sideshow who actually distributes many of the their their sculpture and like other company sculpture. And there's yeah, there's XM Studios that does like a lot of Marvel stuff and then even like a Batman did it like recently. Like Batman Ninja I think. And um and there's uh Prime One which I think they're based like in Japan or something. That that yeah, they do like a lot of Batman stuff and and many DC properties and and other stuff and and even like Iron Studio back in Brazil, they do like they do like pretty cool stuff too. And uh, and that's only like for the kind of the static uh, statues because there's like companies like Hot Toys and and even Asbro that does like their own sculpture but yeah the the really high end ones it's it's basically uh, those guys and of course there's all the whole uh, um, I don't even know how to call them but like the the sculptor I guess like market which do like commissions and stuff like that so so yeah, those guys are like a, some really, really uh, crazy talented uh, people in there. So, so yeah, I just think it's cool that uh, for once, uh, you know, for the longest time, the 2D guys uh, could do that. And like in 3D, it wasn't really a thing. But now it's with 3D printing, it's, it's a lot more happening. Of course, like you don't do, do that like during conventions just because of the time it requires but um, still I think that's a cool uh, it's cool that uh, now you're able to do it Just wanted like to wrap a little bit like around the hand, so I'll we'll see how it goes. But You guys are pretty quiet tonight, huh? Are you, uh, everybody's all doing okay? You're not, uh, sick or anything, or, uh, 
because right now it's uh yeah maybe not like in your uh, in your country but right now it's uh, over here in Quebec it's it's like the sick days like basically everybody uh, become uh, got like the flu and stuff like that so because of the I guess the cold or anything or something like that and yeah basically uh, everybody's sick right now so it's uh yeah right before Christmas so we're all hoping that it will pass just before Christmas and then after that we can just move on and have fun Okay, and then No, no sound. It's not because I don't talk that there's no sound, really. You're not hearing me at all. By the way, uh, hello, John. Nice to meet you. Well, uh, nice to see you, I mean. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I guess I'm tired a little bit. But, uh, yeah, Prashan, like that, that Agamemnon uh, outfit. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually like an in-game model that you see. It's not like a high one. It's uh it's all it's all from the in game asset. And yes, I uh I did like a UV and retopo. But yeah, I like so much fun for that outfit because I really try like to push it like at first like the concept that we got. Uh it wasn't uh I don't know, like it's it was like lacking like kind of a a nipicness factor or stuff like that. So I kinda of really like tried to work hard with the concept artist, like try to find you know, reference and where we could go and then challenge the concept artist. I know it was like kind of a kind of a, a art for him because uh, I was like trying to really like find like stuff that would make him unique. But um, yeah, we did like a lot of a uh, back and forth together. With the, you know, basically I would sculpt something and then he would paint over and then I would sculpt again and. Uh, up until we actually find like a some kind of middle spot that we settle on and yeah and that's that's how it became uh, Agamemnon so it's uh that's pretty much the part of the story that's one of the thing I really like it's it's if I could I, c I would love like just to design like in 3D, like in the spatial space, like the characters, rather than just like execute from a concept. Because I think concept wise it's it's cool like to have a concept for sure. Color and all like it I think it that's a great first uh draft. But the whole three D spatial space, there's so much you can play around with that. And yeah, sometimes like the two D guys it's harder like for them to wrap their head around or like explore kind of a silhouette or like how could this? Uh, so I think like yeah, like I think like a mix of 2D and 3 3D. It's like it's a uh, it's a great way to maximize both potentials. So, but uh, yeah, I I kind of like help like design another outfit that it's not released yet and yeah, I need not even announced. But yeah, I I won't like uh, spoil anything. But yeah, for this one, I like the chance to be even more like really uh, involved in the in the redesign of the concept, and I think it it came out like pretty cool.
but um, yeah, I'll I'll let you know, guys, once it's uh, official and it's announced. I kind of like what I did there, and I try like to replicate. I kind of like the fact that you know, they're both of them they're leaning backward, and then you got one sticking up up front. It's a uh, and I think I'm gonna try to replicate the oh, <laughs> sound is back. Wow, okay. Is it because it's lagging or something? Do you guys like find it like kind of a uh, choppy or whatever? Like that because like from here it seems like to be perfectly smooth, but uh yeah, I don't have a clue on, on your end if it, and I'm like and I'm not really like keeping track with OBS, so Yeah, j yeah, just let me know if uh you feel like it's it's unbearable or something. I'll try to do something. I don't know what, but uh I'll try. Another thing, another thing that I kind of like to do is like when I get like a lot of uh, overlapping elements like that, because right now you see like you get like those two um, parts sticking out, and uh, right now there's like a nice rhythm going on with the side pieces, which I'm gonna like probably like repeat over here. I think it's I'm gonna try to keep that rhythm going on. But um yeah, sometimes I'll try like when it comes like to the front part of the piece, I feel like it's kinda of boring right now because it's you know, here there's like a lot of thing going on, you know, shape and direction but over here it's more kind of flat like all on the same level so basically I'll try like to play around and keep that kind of a uh, momentum going on and I don't know exactly where I'm gonna go with it but I just want to be sure uh, that we'll see like all the all the parts from the front view if possible might not be possible but at least I'll try and, and yeah it's see like right now you already you got like a some kind of flame shape it might not like stick in the end but at least it's a I give I give out like a end that it's there so it's something that we can build on top of it later I only like to have like all the shapes and design figure out right away but at least I can put cues for uh, later when I'm going to be coming back because sometimes that's the thing like I, I get stuck but when I come back like in the next session I'll have like fresh eyes and I'll be able to solve some of the issues that, that I wasn't the first time wasn't able to do it the first time I mean uh, <laughs> yeah, you mute, you mute my French accent. Huh? Is that it? I'm working with English guys, and they say my accent is superb. So, uh, I, uh, I, I really 
try hard to hide my French accent so you guys can actually understand what I'm saying. But I know that there's like worse accent than mine, so. As long as you guys can actually understand what I'm saying, and I'm just like making sound, it's it's cool. Because to be honest with you, outside of French and English, I don't know like any other language. I, I wish I could actually learn more, but yeah, it's always like time. Actually, that's one of the things I'd like to ask for Christmas, is like to have more time, <laughs> just to do like my own stuff and but sadly there's no such thing you just need like to make up some or make time for some so that's my that's my excuse for uh, sculpting tonight it's i'm trying to make time for for this that's one of the thing that i really like about see like right now i was like kind of putting like straight lines I think like sometimes it's hard like to see volume and see like how stuff are around, but as soon as you put like lines like that, you uh, like it, it almost like jump in your face, you know, like you, you can see right away like what kind of uh, volume you got. Feel like it's more, it's easier like to understand now what's going on. So, so after that, if you need to fix it. It becomes a lot easier so sometimes like even if you don't plan to to use like long term those lines you can still like uh, put them on just to just to define your like your your form because sometimes you might be trapped like you know that something is going on but you just can't quite nail it and of course like I try not to be rough I try like to go with smooth kind of approach so you're not like not destroying but like slowly building up the shape it's, it's not about it's not a race See, like right now, I'm trying to play the, <laughs> I'm trying to play the silhouette. Like it's, I know it's not like physically accurate, but still, now we started like to understand more like the, the different shapes of the, the farm. So, so let's just see if we can actually start looking at something else. So, I think we like to subdivide that model again. And that's another thing that it's cool. If you just go like this and you subdivide your your parts as you go along, first off, like you're not doing a dynamish, which if I would do like a dynamish right now, it would kind of destroy parts of the details over here, which that's something I don't, I don't want. And if, you know, of course you could always like go sculptress. Sorry. You could always go sculptress and that that could be like a good alternative as well and um, if you subdivide then you lose all the options that you can have like you know insert mesh, you model all of that stuff but right now it's not like super uh, important but uh, even the sculpture stuff you, you kind of lose it but if you just like go like I'm doing right now it's whoops I'm just gonna take like a little bit more I'm gonna go with the old shoulder actually and it doesn't need like to be super accurate you know since I'm I'm like kind of fleshing out the detail it's, it's more about like spreading enough polygons to have something to work with rather than having like something really clean and because once more one once I'm I'm starting like to define really the stuff then I will kind of break them apart one by one and then I'll make I'll make like a, a, a ultra clean uh, part so Right now I'm subdividing it. Maybe like another time, another shot, and then again. Yeah. Now it starts to be heavy. I'll just do one undo. 
and see if it works out and if not and that's that's another tar another thing that you can actually do it's uh sometimes I'll just like do a group mask so if you need like to go back later and add more subdivisions to it you can just like isolate it mask it and then you know then smooth that mask maybe a little bit but uh but yeah I could just like press uh, control D once more to add more subdivisions so something to keep in mind I'm just gonna isolate the arm again so you guys don't have like any uh, any questions yet hey Mario by the way like I didn't say hello so what's up man Hola, senor. I wish I could actually, you know, understand more, know more Spanish. The only, the only thing that I, under, I actually still remember, and I'm not even sure I actually am saying it like right, but it's, it's a, uh, uh, bailar, uh, what is it? And I, I forgot like the name was it was like something like bailar, comigo. But I've, I missed, I'm missing like one word, which basically what it meant was just like, do you want to dance with me or something? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's when I uh, used to be, uh, um, I guess, uh, flirting with the ladies in my younger days. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a long, long time ago. So, yeah. I oh, know it's it's oh, okay now. No, I, I think it just came back. It's it's bailar. No, it's quieres bailar conmigo. Is that it, right? Is, am I am I like pronouncing it like correctly or not? Just like, and I know that there's like a whole difference between, you know, like like Spanish Spanish and, and Mexican Spanish, and for some reason I think I lean more for uh, Mexican. Spanish, just because I guess, like, I guess we're hearing over here, like, a lot more of the Mexican one, and I think this, well, I might be wrong, but I think the Spanish one, to get like that, that kind of a, more of a, the tip of the, the tongue with the, like that, you know, well, I don't know if, well, I heard, like, that kind of crazy story about, like, a, a king back in Spain, like, in a, a while back, that uh, you know, he was like uh, talking, but like uh, all the words would come out like on, on like on the tip of his uh, tongue, and and all the kingdom like to accommodate, and, and of course like not insult the king. They all started to talk the same way, just to make it like normal for for him, which is which is something uh, quite impressive. If if all of that story is actually true, but yeah, that's uh, that was like my uh, storytelling time. <laughs> of the stream so I hope I didn't put you to bed oh yeah yeah there's like Hermosa and there's even like a Bonita but you know what like Hermosa it's like actually like when I used to work in California Hermosa Beach was actually one of my uh, favorite spot to go I think it was like near uh, Torrance, but uh, I guess, uh, and I think Hermosa to write it exactly like you did, so I didn't know it was like uh, something related to, to the ladies, which is cool. Okay, so that's one of the first bracelet, and then I think I'm gonna do another one. I think one of the great, uh, I saw like one podcast, you can like look it up like uh, recently, oh sorry, I just like uh, touched the mic, but uh, I saw like one podcast recently of a uh, Marco Pluff and uh, basically he was saying and I, I you know when he said it, it was just like it made like a whole lot of, a whole lot of sense it's like the stuff that I'm 
looking for as well but I kind of never like uh, uh, thought about it like that way was um, basically he said you know when he starts sculpting um, one of the sculptures that he does he um, he was super rough but he said like the main idea is like when you look it at a distance it will look like a finished piece I don't know if that makes sense and or I don't know if I actually explain it the right way but basically like everything like is there like you can still read all the forms bracelets stuff like that like if I just yeah if I bring my character back then you can still every but the more you get closer to it then you realize okay no everything is quite rough but basically the main goal is just to put everything in which which is like something that I kind of like do as well but uh, I kind of like never really stop and and realized it but I think that's a that's a good practice like to do like uh, if you want to be sure like you actually not losing the focus of the thing if you look at it from really far away without like adding any, any detail and it reads super well it's you know that there's something that uh, going on that that works so yeah it's I guess it's a good way like uh, just to validate or reassess your own work while you're working so thank you Marco for uh, for clearing clearing the, that concept But yeah, like I was saying, like for the Spanish part, it's uh, I uh, I I don't like flirt anymore because uh, I've been like with the uh, with my girlfriend for like eight years, and yeah, it's uh, I'm quite happy, I'm quite glad that I got her. So yeah, I'm not like uh, I'm not fooling around anymore. I'm uh, I'm more like the loyal kind of type. So so yeah, that's why I'm. I'm like kind of retired. I got a house and kids and yeah, the only thing missing is a marriage, but yeah, maybe it will happen at some point. But yeah, finding I like learning new languages is so fun. It's super hard, but yeah, it's and I think like the hardest part is not like to be immersed in that. Um, let's just see like you learn Japanese, but you're not like surrounded by Japanese people. I think that's that's always like the hardest part but if you just go to Japan and then try to learn J Japanese over there I think uh, I think that's when it's like the most effective because you're not like you're hearing it and you're uh, you're seeing like even like the signs and stuff like that you can or y it's even better if you can actually have s see like the translation like English tra tra the English translation next to the the um, Japanese sign so you can clearly like relate easier so <clears throat> so okay so this is my second bra bracelet I'm just gonna for this it, it looks like you got like some kind of a gauge on oh wait I think that's the I think, I think that's this part what hmm what should I go for I think I'm gonna put like those kind of cyberpunk uh, gauges on the What's happening? Okay, whoop. Did I pause? P 
cause what? My wait. Uh, I'm just like trying to look at the chat while I'm placing this, but the uh, fluent forever. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's uh and even like a, you know, something about language is um, it's sorry for the guys who actually are annoyed with that subject, but um. It's uh I feel like it's since it's like one of the hardest thing to learn, just like learn learning a new language because it doesn't it's not only like sounds or it's like writing, hearing, you know, it, it solicitate like many of the senses. Um I feel like if you're really good at learning languages basically I'm sure like in your mind it opens opens up like some kind of trap just to be a good learner good learner period because you you kind of use of learning something so complex as a language that all the rest seems to be super easy afterwards. Well, I assume, but yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know really where I'm going with this, but uh, just kind of. I know it like it takes longer to do like this kind of process of doing like a rough sketch and but one of the things that I ate so much is like when I I need like to move with the move tool like art surface parts and it start to be wall wobble and wobble and stuff like that it's just man it's it kills like the whole the whole art surface look which yeah which I really like when it's really crisp so Maybe uh, maybe that's my thing, but um, yeah, I would rather like play around with like shapes that I don't really care up until I find like exactly what I want and then do my art surface on top of it. So I really need like to replace that gizmo. It's so annoying, like the way that they put like all the arrows and the scale in the center. It's so not efficient. But I know that Damien. Uh, the mean the uh, I'm not sure like his of his last name I won't even like uh, go there but um basically Damien who did the damn sander uh he did like a gizmo which seemed like to be quite good and uh I actually got it like a while ago but for some reason I never installed it so maybe I should I should take a note but yeah that's something I should definitely change I don't mind like if it's I don't need, like something super crazy or anything like that visually, but I just need like something more efficient. And yeah, this this could clearly be better. Did you guys change yours or if you guys like uh, got like any suggestion for the a better gizmo than this one, then please share it. I I just want to bring out some of the parts that I already did. Mm -hmm.
see like right now I can still play with it since I've changed like the the shape of the shoulder I can still play with it without worrying about destroying it but would, if it would have been like final then that detail might have been warped or I, I would need like to move it like with being like super extra careful which is something that I when I want to sculpt at this level I don't want to constrain by anything I just want to really go for what's uh, looking good and then after that worry about the R surface and make it clean so I'm trying like to really get like the best of both worlds okay and then if I subdivide okay I think I'm gonna subdivide it just then <laughs> Thanks, McBain. Some Frenchy in the house. That's yeah. That's another thing. And right now, like my 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 French accent is not from France at all. It's from uh, Canada. I'm like a French Canadian. I you know that's one of the things. Like in Quebec, for some reason, we just ate like to be called Canadians. We're like you know we're like Quebecer before everything else. But yeah, I don't mind. But. Um, yeah, I'm a French Canadian, so my accent doesn't have like nothing to do with with France. Even if I guess like back then the they're the one who actually created the colonies over here, but yeah. That's uh that's uh my the part of a uh, history that I've just uh, shared with you on my stream, so Okay, why for the gizmo shortcut? Okay. See, like, I didn't know that. Well, I guess I need, like, to be like that. Ah, interesting. Thanks for that. See, like, I, that's the thing. Like, now I, I messed up so much of the shortcuts from ZBrush. Because I, I, I started, like, to use my own shortcuts that, that most of the time I don't even know which one are like the original ones versus like the one that I'm using it's all kind of a I don't know if that makes sense for you guys but it basically I got like a hard time uh, I got like a, because sometimes I kind of overwrite the short keys from ZBrush so yeah so someone will, will like in some kind of video or like even at work will say oh yeah press the you know P or something and then <laughs> what will happen will be be totally different from what the person expects. So, so that's why like I'm sometimes I got like a hard time uh, keeping up with with the original shortcuts because I uh, I'm I'm got I got like so used to mine and even like right now like ZBrush is like adding new shortcuts along the way when uh, when they're releasing new versions. So, yeah, I I'm pretty bad at keeping up with that. But the good thing is, you guys are there, so you can help me out. Oh, it's almost done, eh? Shit, it's crazy how the time fly by. Fly by.
even one thing I think seriously I think I'm gonna do something really quickly just to show you like an idea that I got and some it's something that uh, you might be able like to use on your on your side and since we're like wrapping up like this uh, the stream like I just want to be uh, I just want to make you a gif if if we can call it that um, yeah maybe I won't go like for let's go let's go for five and that's something like it it came up for like a from a, a friend a co-worker and uh, he was doing it doing that and I was just like oh yeah that's right you can do that I completely forgot about it but since he showed me that like it's I've been like using like ever since and it's it's for trims and stuff like that it's crazy nice so uh, maybe like I've shown it like before on the stream but I can't remember but um, I'm gonna show it to you tonight so all the people who missed missed on it missed uh, that part uh, you're in for a small really small small treat but still a treat so I'm, I just wanna go like a little bit like lower and um, and of course like right now you know it's not polish at all so I expect you guys actually to be able like, to polish that but one other thing that I'm gonna do right now it's um, I'm just gonna go in Z modeler and then I'm gonna take face and I'll go for poly groups and then poly loop and I'm gonna so I did my loop so I'm just gonna isolate it just to, so it goes faster and you guys can see what I'm doing and right now it's isolated uh yeah right now that topology is pretty bad but uh yeah wait i'm just gonna because if i'm showing you this i want it i want it like to be proper so i'll just like do this like that and then it will just like help the old retopo so and i think i will even like push out a, a crease so zbrush or zmesher knows that you need like to keep the edge so yeah so we'll just go for same z remesh oh yeah there you go so i'm gonna just smooth it out a bit more so i'll just go back to z modeler and then add a loop so what i'll do is like i will hide that loop if it wants it okay and then once it's hidden, you can go and then go auto groups because it's not touching anymore. And from there, you can do, and I love that trick. It's you can go and do. Um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, curve function and right there you see like there's a partially displayed not really tree edge no but polygroups when a polygroup is enabled the frame partially well basically you'll see it creates like a, a curve all around cycle my polygroups so from there what you can do is just like you know right now I've used like the curve tube but you can go with like anything that you like as long as it's an insert mesh it works so so yeah I got like a couple of uh, IMMs but yeah you can go for any IMM and basically you just I'll click one time right now it's too big but yeah I'll just and sometimes you want to remove the dynamic as well because you know like you saw I couldn't go like a lot more smaller but yeah wait I'll try and yeah this this needs like a little bit of a fiddling okay so let's just say like that's it you know now you got like a trim and the, the great part is you know right now I'm just like oh wait it's it's like sitting half in it I want it like to be more deep or more out so what you can do is actually this thing which is um, in um, I think it's in brush is it a depth set it so this is like basically all deep you want like your line to be inside of the mesh so I can go like this and and then 
see like it's it's half inside but I can go like completely on top like that and do something like this and then once you're happy with the, the trim that you got around you can you can go back to the um, stroke function and then you just do delete to delete the curve and then you do a split mask uh, a split mask point so from there you got your trim that follows perfectly the edge because it's it's based off the topology and of course like from there because like you saw I wanted like to go thinner than that but I couldn't so you can always like go back to the formation and then you got like the inflate and then you can start to sometimes yeah sometimes maybe it's like better to go by value so if I go one, minus one minus one minus one well yeah I think we're gonna stay there so yeah and and this of course like can be at some point like if if you feel like it's too dense for something like that you can always like see remesh it if I go for five but of course if you see remesh it it might not follow as well so so yeah so that can be like a something to uh something to try out but yeah it's super efficient especially if you're doing like parts like pads or anything like that or you want to do like any kind of trims and like I said like right now I did it like with with this but you can always like go with uh, I know I'm like going a, a little bit over time but if I do like a frame mesh and I go in and I go for uh, this and I Oh wait, I need like that's one of the thing you need like to activate the curve mode. See, so it's it's uh but in there you can I think it's the the curve step. You uh, is that it? Yeah, no. But yeah, basically like I'm modifying the distance between the curve. But yeah, you can you can clearly like play around with the uh, whatever you want to put in, but it but that's the thing like right now it's been a while since I've been using it but you can clearly like define how much uh, you know right now they're all stuck to each other and I think it's a step but you know for some reason it seems like it's not working proper but uh, yeah you can just like play around and then have like a something else than uh, or or even like one of the things that I use often is like this like right now curve strap it's so you got like that that trim sitting on top and this can be like a uh, combine with uh, wait uh, I'll just uh, won't once you you know let's let's just say I do this then I'm just like okay this is my trim and it's like pretty simple so I'll go in and delete my curve uh, I just want to be sure okay I'm gonna split it just to be sure like it's not interfering with the rest of the of the under mesh uh, split ask point so oh, now it's split so I uh, will not affect underneath but you can from there you can use all the zmodeler function on top of that so sometimes what it's cool like to do it's a uh, it's a uh, then set. That's only one face, and then the poly loop, and instead of being, you go a region. Yeah. For some reason, it doesn't go in the center. Um, center only. Uh, well you can't that's that's the thing like there's many ways to skin a cat so you instead of I just wanted to show you where I want to go with this so you can go single or multiple edge loop so and and then poly loops 
and then you can do Q mesh by poly loop uh, or poly loop poly groups. I'm just gonna isolate it so we can see. Oh yeah, is it because I'm just gonna uh, mask it just in case? And yeah, sometimes it's that's one of the thing. Like you can play around with all that, but uh, I'll just try it with poly loop. Yeah, it doesn't seem to like that at all. Um, Well, you know, let's go for that then. Oh, because like my poly loop probably went on the, but basically you can just like go crazy and, and do whatever you like. <laughs> for some reason, it doesn't wanna doesn't wanna do it. Yeah, it's it's not really working out like I was planned, but uh, probably because like it's it's closed faces. Yeah, it's if I would have done it this first, sorry, and it's like kind of a sketchy uh, explanation. But uh, if I uh, if I do this and then it's easier when you get like open edges. So I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah um yeah i think it's getting worse and worse but yeah just go try it out guys really like it's i think like zmodeler is a phenomenal tool and it's kind of like underused sometimes but it's what you can just like pull off with that because you know let's just say after you're done with this then you can like clearly just go in and then it says um you can go like crescent by polygroup but if in this case like that it's like it's not possible then you can always like go for a well right now it seems to be okay but um you go to uh, poly groups and then uh, you go by edges uh no normal sorry and usually like it's 25 is my favorite value so if you do that then you seems like it you get like most of your uh, you know different poly groups on different kind of face and then you can just go back to polygroup and then to and then subdivide it and then make the brush crash but yeah it's uh sorry for this explanation seriously it's uh that was like quite bad but uh but yeah hopefully you saw like a little bit of the potential from from that trick um if you got any questions please let me know it's uh but you know, right now it's like a rough example because I wanted to rush this, but I'll do it like many times on this model for sure. So don't worry if you if you didn't really understand everything. You'll uh, if you if you still watch those streams uh, when I get back from uh, the holidays, then you'll uh, you'll get it at some point for sure. So yeah, so this is our dude. Not much, you know, a lot more further. But still, it's slowly like building up, I know. But uh, yeah, hopefully it was interesting enough. Uh, I just want to go like over like some of the questions before I uh, say uh, have a good uh, Christmas and uh, holiday. So uh, the new fancy deformers, yeah, I guess you mean like the one from the Gizmo, uh, John. Is that it? Like the, uh, where's my pivot? Where are you, man? Uh, wait, okay. Um, 
I guess what you're referring to is those things. Uh, not really, to be honest with you. Like it's, I know that you can do lattice box and stuff like that, but and twist and taper and, but yeah, no, I, you know, I saw like there's like cool things that you can do and there's like the new, uh, the new mode that you can create polygons out of, which I can't remember the name. But yeah, no, it's it's cool, but yeah, it's I I didn't find like a specific use for it yet. So at some point I will. But right now, like I can cover like pretty much all of those function functions with this. But yeah, it's I think it's like it's more like a question of a uh, we got so many tools and so many combination that it's I just need like to spend more time with it and then find like a place for it in my pipeline. So um, do you use Sculptures Pro for your project? What do you think about that? So, yeah, 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 well, r not here at home, like, on my computer, just because, like, the computer is, like, strong enough, like, it's li lagging like crazy, so every time that I'm trying, like, to sculpt with that, uh, yeah, it just goes nuts, but, yeah, definitely, it's, like, you saw me, like, earlier, and was just, like, masking parts, it's something that I would still do if I would have, like, a faster PC, like, when I'm at work, like I'm, I'm still like at the office. I'm still like masking some of the bits, but most of the time I love like going to sculptures and especially like going in with things like that. Because the thing is, right now like I'm, you know, I'm showing you this and it's like kind of all blocky and kind of missing some topology. Sometimes it's I like it because I can find form sometimes, but at the same time I can polish a lot more of that blocking instead of being like so loose and. And, and sometimes it's just like um, if I can if I can have like a decent result with sculptures like I I end enough instead of just redoing it then I'll be able like to reproject it on my extracted part so so there's definitely like ways to um, recycle a whole lot more of uh, what's been done before so um <laughs> yeah, B button shut down the computer without ZBrush tape. Yeah, that's. I don't think you need to press B. You just need like to press a couple of of buttons all after the one and one and the other without letting a G you need ZBrush uh, um, do do its process. So um, you can smooth curve. Yeah, that's right. You can smooth the curve and the. Uh, you know when I was showing the curve, you can smooth it in the stroke modifiers which which are um uh, wait alpha brush stroke modifiers and yeah i guess it's one of them but yeah i know like those three menus you got like a curve curve function and curve oh no i think that's here yeah like, like you mentioned so yeah, it's definitely like those three menus. When you play with the curve, you can play around with those settings. You you'll change your curve. So hey, Rayton, I just yeah. So yeah, I think that's this is it. You know, I'll just um, wrap on that. I mean, once more, like if you want to keep track of what, where where I'm going with all of that, like I I, I got like a cool uh, surprises coming up for 2019. But yeah, feel free to uh, you know to follow me up on uh, on social media. I uh, you know these days I I've, I've been not like super active because uh, yeah I've been like quite busy on the uh, outside of the social medias. But yeah, don't worry, I'm I'll, I'm definitely uh, it's definitely like 3D and printing related. So. It's really exciting stuff, I think. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to share it with you. So in the meantime, thanks again for being here. I think that was like awesome, you guys. I've, it's it's always like a pleasure to actually sculpt with you. I just wish I could actually spend more time. But yeah, <laughs> w w being dad and you know working at you know full time, it's it's uh, it's it's hard to find like a free time for it. But yeah, I I really. Uh, I'm really happy to see you with me like uh, every Monday night. So yeah, definitely uh, I, I lift my hat to you guys. So so thanks a lot. I hope you like you will have like a great holiday, and I hope I'll be able to catch up with you back in January. I should be able like to get back around the. Let me check the calendar. 
Um, it's going to be around the, I think the 14, yeah, 14 of January 2019. I should be uh, back on my streams. So, so yeah, hope to see you there. So take it easy, everyone. I hope I'll see your stuff around. Don't you know? Don't be scared to, well, scared or you know, just if you feel like it, you know, you could always like tag me in your stuff. I always like love to keep track of what everybody's doing. So yeah, if you want to share it with me, uh, that would be my pleasure. So take it easy, guys. Bye bye.